So my dear students, in the last period, we have uh, studied about the uh, various examples and by the revision, we come to know that uh, the uh, equilibrium can be established from both the sides and equilibrium is dynamic in nature. Let us understand the same kind of things with the another example. That is the example number two. Let's have a look to that and understand it well. Let's pay attention and let's consider this example well. <clears throat> so let us consider the reaction H2 plus I2 that gives twice HI. Suppose at equilibrium, we have the P mole of, uh, P mole of H2. If we have a Q mole of I2 and R mole of HI. That is what we get it at, at the equilibrium. Now, if we start with a equal initial concentration of H2 and I2, reaction move forward and concentration of hydrogen and iodine decreases. It's quite obvious that the reactants react with each other and their concentration decreases and concentration of HI increases. And after some time, as we are aware, equilibrium will be established. So we will study the equilibrium this way. Now you can see this wonderful graph, my dear students, I have specially uh, drawn for you. It is wonderful to understand this graph. Please pay attention and this is a unique graph where this is the combination of two different graphs, if you can see. But so, kya aapko graph dikh raha hai screen pe clearly? Yes, yes, sir, dikh raha sir. So, ye jo graph hai, this is a graph which is the combination of two different graphs actually. So, here one graph is uh, with this black pen, you can see here that I have drawn this graph for you uh, with the black pen. You can see this, this is the graph I'm talking about. It goes from here to here, this is the one graph. Then we have the another graph with the blue pen that goes from here to here. So if, if we really uh, hide this portion of the graph, if some other, other way, let me see if we have any uh, anything to do with. Uh, see, <clears throat> if, we st uh, if we start studying this, uh, um, suppose we start the initial concentration of H2 and I2, my dear students, if we start with the initial concentration of H2 and I2 at here, what happens? The concentration of H2 and I2 decreases, 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 decreases. And at one time it becomes, you know, straight line. So when the straight line starts, actually the equilibrium has been established. Same way the initial concentration of HI was zero. Then it increases, increases, it goes increasing and then at some place, there is an equilibrium established and the line become almost straight. So this is the first graph where we start with the hydrogen and iodine. Now the another graph is when we start with the HI. So when we start with the HI, the concentration of HI decreases, decreases, and at one place it becomes constant and we get the straight line. At the same time, the concentration of H2 and I2 was zero at first time. But then due to the decomposition of HI, the concentration increases, increases, and then it becomes straight line at one particular time. Now, this is the portion where we get the equilibrium, my dear students. And at equilibrium, we have the concentration of uh, hydrogen uh, P moles, concentration of iodine Q moles, and concentration of HI R mole. So whether we start from here or we start from here, Whenever there is an equilibrium, the concentration for H2, I2 and HI, we get the same. So this is the graph that shows us, you can see here even I have written that this is the graph with the blue pen represents the forward reactions. The, the graph with the black pen represents the backward reaction or reverse reactions. This is the graph of concentration versus time. And from this graph, we can easily understand that whether we start from the reactants or if we start from the products. First thing is equilibrium can be established 
from both the side, whether you start from the reactants or whether we start from the products. And the second interesting thing is, when the equilibrium is established, the, the concentration of the reactants and products is constant, whether we start from the reactants or products. And we should even remember that this equilibrium is always a dynamic in nature. That means at equilibrium, both the forward reactions and reverse reactions have not been stopped and they're and they are going on they are they are in a in a dynamic position and <clears throat> the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reactions i hope these things you must have noticed it uh, let us look into the text and uh, we will again prove it that the equilibrium that has been established is uh, dynamic in nature we can also start with 2HI alone, that is two moles of HI, and make reaction to proceed in the reverse reactions or in the reverse directions. Concentration of HI decreases, concentration of H2 and I2 increases, and at equilibrium, their concentration become constant. When we measure the equilibrium of these uh, species at concentration, we find that we have R moles of HI, we have Q mole of uh, I2 and P mole of <coughs> X2, which is very similar to the previous case where we have started from I2 and X2. Both the way we get the equal moles of species at equilibrium. And at equilibrium, if you see, the moles of HI is always R mole, the mole of X2 is always P mole, and the mole of I2 is always Q mole. That is how we determine that at equilibrium, all the species have same concentration, and that is why equilibrium can be established from either side, either from the reactant side or from the product side. Now what happens, my dear students, at equilibrium, let us introduce some radioactive iodine to the equilibrium. So there is an equilibrium established between H2I2 and twice HI, and from outside, some or the other way, we introduce the radioactive iodine into the equilibrium. And after some time, if we measure or if we note or if we find out what we find out is the iodine present into the reactant side has also some of the radioactive iodine present with it. Same way our HI is also radioactive now. So we have introduced only radioactive iodine, but now the HI is even radioactive. So even the product side, we get some of the radioactive hydrogen iodide after some time. What does it mean? At equilibrium from outside, at equilibrium from outside, if you introduce radioactive iodine, equilibrium get disturbed. And again, after some time, equilibrium is established. When the equilibrium is established, at equilibrium, we shall get some radioactive hydrogen iodine molecules too. What does it indicate? It indicates that equilibrium is dynamic in nature. That means at equilibrium, the reaction has not been stopped. Both the reaction, that is forward reactions and uh, reverse reactions are going on. And that is why in the HI, even we have got the radioactive iodine that has been transferred from the radioactive iodine to the hydrogen iodide. So this is how my dear student, we understand that equilibrium is dynamic in nature and equilibrium can be established from both the sides. Now we have uh, enough discussion about the equilibrium. Now let us understand the next point that is law of chemical equilibrium. Let us understand the next point that is law of chemical equilibrium and equilibrium constant. So this is even a very important point for this chapter and it is a very useful to understand many other concepts even. So let us read the law of equilibrium first. At a given temperature, the product of concentrations of reactant or uh, reaction products, sorry, the, at equilibrium or at a given temperature, the product of concentration of reaction products raised to the power, raised to the respective stoichiometric coefficient divided by product of concentration of reactants raised to their individual stoichiometric coefficients. So <clears throat> what do they try to tell us? Let me explain it to you. Suppose we have a reaction, A, A mole of A plus B mole of B, that gives us the product C mole of C plus D mole of D. 
this is the reaction when we <clears throat> when we multiply the concentration of c and the concentration of d this is the product of the concentration of products or reaction products raised to their respective stoichiometric power that means the stoichiometric coefficient of c is c so we will put power concentration of c to the power c concentration of c to the power c same way we will put the concentration of d to the power d this is what it is the product of concentration of reaction products raised to the respective stoichiometric coefficient so this sentence represent this <laughs> let me read it once again the sentence for you the product of concentration of reaction products this c and d are the reaction products their concentration is represented by the square bracket raised to the respective stoichiometric coefficient you can see that i have raised some power and this power what i have raised is equal to their stoichiometric coefficient divided by so to express in, to express the division we have drawn the underline so now the next thing we are going to put into the uh, uh, denominator what is there by product of concentration of reactants so first what is what are the reactants a and b so we'll write their uh, concentration so concentration of a product means multiplication so multiplied by the concentration of b product of concentration of reactants raised to their individual stoichiometric coefficient so what is the individual what is the stoichiometric coefficient of a it is a uh, generally the stoichiometric coefficient of a is to the power a so stoichiometric coefficient for b is power b this is how we understand so we can write it power b <coughs> this is how we understand my dear students and uh, let us keep it back <coughs> Uh, let me write it once again for you so that you know there was some disturbance you can write it here a to the power a into the b to the power b this this divided by this has a constant value so this is always constant so to represent it a constant let us put k here <clears throat> this constant value is called the equilibrium constant this k what we call it is known as the equilibrium constant and this law what i have written with the uh, green pen my dear students is actually the law of law of chemical equilibrium what now i if i read it once again you will understand it better <clears throat> what is the law of chemical equilibrium at a given temperature the product here product means multiplication the product of concentration of reaction product raised to their respective stoichiometric coefficient divided by the product of their concentration of reactants raised to their individual stoichiometric coefficient has a constant value this ratio is always constant this is the law of equilibrium and this constant is known as the equilibrium constant बच्चों अगर ये चीज आपको अभी भी समझ में नहीं आई तो आप पूछ सकते हैं बच्चों क्या ये लॉ समझ में आया है क्या आप लोग मुझे सुन पा रहे हैं फिर से समझा जा सकता ट्राई डू एंड अब स्टेटमेंट इज कॉल्ड द इक्विलिब्रियम लॉ or law of chemical equilibrium let us understand it once again actually you can see that there is a reaction <clears throat> that is the chemical reaction a plus b that gives c plus d they have stoichiometric coefficient is equal to 1 now what we'll do we'll do their uh, the this c and d are the products so they are called the reaction products reaction products this uh, reaction products we just write their concentration with the square bracket so this square bracket actually represent their concentration so if i write square bracket c means concentration of c if i write square bracket d means concentration of d what is the power their stoichiometric coefficient in both the cases is 1 so this is 1 i put 1 for both the cases same way for a and b even i put 1 
so now what is this if i if i forget about this this part if i do it like that what is this this is the product of the concentration of reaction product raised to the power equal to their stoichiometric coefficient divided by you can see this divided by the product of the reaction reactants a uh, product of the concentration of reactants raised to their respective stoichiometric coefficient that is by 1 this ratio is having the constant value to represent the constant value we put k here so this ratio is always constant this is your law of equilibrium this this ratio is constant at equilibrium this is what it is known as the law of chemical equilibrium and this constant value of this ratio is known as the equilibrium constant i hope now it is understood hello dear students yes sir kisi ne bola tha fir se samjha do wo to bolo bhai हेलो फिर से समझाने को किसने बोला था भाई समझ में आया कि नहीं तो मैं आगे चलू एटलीस्ट हेल्प मी आउट माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड म्यूट योर सेल्फ एंड टेल मी इफ यू अंडरस्टूड और नॉट यस सर हु वाज दैट कैन आई हियर हिज नेम okay the student will prefer to disturb the class but but they will not cooperate yes sir who was that can i hear yes. the name yes kya aap naam bata sakte hain yes kumar okay yes samajh mein aa gaya beta yes sir okay okay then let's move forward thank you thank you for replying at least <laughs> because okay so here you if you look at this uh, the square bracket represents the molar concentration and kc is called the equilibrium constant this expression concentration of c into concentration of d divided by concentration of a into concentration of b is called equilibrium constant expression this ratio is called the equilibrium constant expression now if and equation 1 is called the law of mass action so this equation this complete equation is known as the law of mass action law of mass action now why is it called law of mass action let us understand why do we call it as a law of mass action we call it a uh, law of mass action because in earlier day concentration was called the active mass so as the concentration was called the active mass this uh, representation was called the law of mass action if the reaction is a mole of a plus b mole of b that gives c mole of c plus d mole of d then we'll write kc is equal to concentration of c to the power c concentration of d to the power d concentration of a to the power a and concentration of b to the power b that is equal to kc so as it was the uh, ratio here the ratio was 1 we put one ratio as so, sorry the stoichiometric coefficients were one here so we put the one as a power but if there are stoichiometric coefficients available we put their coefficient or we put those co stoichiometric coefficient as a power into the law of mass ac action expression or uh, law of equilibrium expression and then we write kc to the left hand side now what are those various characteristics of equilibrium constant let us try to look into the various characteristics of equilibrium constant equilibrium constant is applicable only when concentration of reactants and concentration of products have attained their equilibrium state that means the concentration of reactants and concentration of products has become constant on that time only we calculate the equilibrium constant and they should remain constant they should not change frequently and when the equilibrium state is obtained completely that time only we calculate the equilibrium constant now second the value of equilibrium constant is independent of the initial concentration of reactants and products 
So whatever the initial concentration of reactants and products you take, this ratio is going to be same in each case. So please remember that the value of equilibrium constant does not depend upon the initial concentration of reactants if you start from the reactant side or does not depend upon the equilibrium concentration of products if you start from the product side. This ratio is always going to be same at given temperature because it depends upon temperature. Equilibrium constant is temperature dependent. Temperature changes, the value of equilibrium constant changes. So my dear students, uh, if you change the temperature, the value of equilibrium constant even changes. But if you keep the uh, temperature constant, then the value of equilibrium constant remains constant at a given temperature. Equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction is inverse of the equilibrium constant for the forward reactions. Please keep this point in your mind because this uh, point I'm going to explain with you, explain to you with the example. If equilibrium constant for forward reaction is K and the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction is Kc dash, let us say equilibrium constant for forward reaction is Kc and equilibrium constant for uh, reverse reaction is Kc dash, then Kc dash is equal to one upon Kc. That means equilibrium constant for reverse reaction is equal to inverse, that means one upon Kc inverse of the forward reactions. And then the last point, when a chemical reaction is multiplied by number n, then the new equilibrium constant, if it is obtained, that is Kc double dash, then Kc double dash is equal to Kc to the power n. If the chemical reaction is multiplied by 1 upon n, that is divided by n, then Kc dash is equal, Kc double dash is equal to Kc to the power 1 upon n, where Kc is equal to the equilibrium constant of original reactions. This last two point, my dear students, I'm going to express to you with the example. So let us have a, a look to the uh, next portion. Can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. Can you read the first point what I'm underlining? Please just go read Karen. Do read it, my dear students. Can you read this? Okay. What is written over here? Any one of you? Yes, sir. Please read it for me. Explaining last two points with example, write the... Equilibrium okay, thank you. So this last two points we have seen that the new equilibrium constant K C dash is equal to one upon Kc and we have seen that if we suppose new equilibrium constant Kc double dash is equal to Kc to the power n or Kc to the power one upon n. This is what we have written. Let us understand this with the example so that you can understand it better. Write the equilibrium constant for the following reactions and develop relation between these two equilibrium constants. Now please have a look to these reactions. H2 plus I2, that gives 2HI. Yes. Let us say this is the forward reactions. So for this reaction, if you want to write equilibrium constant, we can write Kc is equal to, see concentration of this product to the power 2. So HI to the power 2 divided by concentration of I2. The equilibrium, uh, the stoichiometric coefficient is 1. So there is no need to put any power. Same way the concentration of H2 to the power 1. That is what I have written. Kc is equal to. For this particular reaction, now we can write the equilibrium constant that Kc is equal to Hi to the power 2 divided by H2, concentration of H2 multiplied by the concentration of I2. And let us say the value is X. Now we shall write the reverse reaction. So we have written the reverse reaction. What is the reverse reaction? Twice Hi is equal to H2 gas plus I2 gas. Now equilibrium constant for the above reaction, let us write the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction is Kc dash. So for this reverse reaction, we write the Kc dash and Kc dash is equal to the concentration of I H2 to the power one, concentration of I2 to the power one. See in the uh, numerator, we have written it and then concentration of Hi to the power two. So that is what I have written. This is the new 
uh, <coughs> equilibrium constant Kc dash for the reverse reaction. Please remember, we had the uh, Kc that is for the forward reaction. This Kc was for the forward reaction. This Kc dash is for the reverse reactions. Now let's move forward and understand. Now, if I take or if I divide this equation with, uh, or if I multiply this equation, this equation I'm going to multiply it with one upon H2 and I2 divided by one upon H2 into I2. What happens? This H2 and I2 can be cancelled and this HI square will have H2 and I2 under it. So this is what it happens in the next step here. Kc dash is equal to one upon HI square divided by H2 divided by I2. But we are all already aware that the value of Kc You can see that the value of Kc is equal to Hi square divided by H2 divided by I2 and that is for what we can write X here. So here, instead of this, we can write X. So it is one upon X, but what is our X? X is equal to Kc. That you can easily see from this equation that the value of X is equal to Kc. So Kc is equal to X. So for X, we can write Kc and that is how we can prove that Kc dash is equal to one upon Kc. And that is why we can say that we can easily now express this into the words that equilibrium constant for reverse reaction, equilibrium constant for reverse reaction, that is Kc dash is the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the forward reactions. So equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction, Kc is equal to the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the reaction in the forward direction, that is Kc, and this is how we prove that Kc dash is equal to one upon Kc. Now we have the next question. Write the equilibrium constant for the following reactions and establish the relation between them. So let's have a look to this. H2 gas plus I2 gas, it gives twice HI gas. This is your equilibrium, uh, this is your equation number one. Equilibrium constant for the above reaction Kc is equal to HI square divided by H2 into I2. This is your equation number two. Now, my dear students, let us multiply these reactions. Let us multiply these reactions with two. So when we multiply this reaction with two, what do we get? 2H2 plus 2I2 is equal to 4HI. This is what I'm talking about. 2H2 plus 2I2 is equal to 4HI. Now for these reactions, which we obtain after multiplication, we can easily understand or we can easily write the equilibrium constants. So equilibrium constant for the above reaction is equal to, so equilibrium constant for these reactions, newly found reaction, which we multiply with uh, two, we can write Kc dash is equal to Hi to the power four divided by H2 to the power two and I2 to the power two. This is your third equation. That is what we can take the square of whole of it. So if we write square, then HI to the power four is equal to HI square to the power two. HI square is uh, H2 square is equal to H2 to the power two. I2 square is equal to I2 to the power two. So overall, if we take the HI square divided by H2 into I2 to the power two, we can say that this is the value that we can write for our original equation equilibrium constant Kc. And this is how we can easily say that new formed Kc dash is equal to Kc to the power two from equation two and three, we can write it very easily. Now, instead of multiplying it with the two, my dear students, let us multiply the reactions with some other number. So equilibrium constant obtained by multiplying the equation with two, Kc dash is equal to the equilibrium constant of the original equilibrium O original chemical uh, equilibrium to the power two. So we have already seen that Kc dash is equal to Kc to the power two. Now, instead of multiplying two, let us multiply these reactions, the original reaction with one by two. So the original re reaction was H2 plus I2 that gives two HI. If you multiply it with one by two, we will get one by two H2 plus one by two I2 is equal to HI. 
this chemical equation is obtained by multiplying the original equation h2 plus i2 that gives 2 hi with 1 by 2 now if we want to write the equilibrium constant for this particular reactions what should we write we can write the new equilibrium constant here which is uh, for kc dash so this equilibrium constant my dear students we call it as a kc dash and from this we can say that our kc dash is equal to the concentration of hi divided by the concentration of h2 to the power 1 by 2 and concentration of i2 to the power 1 by 2 now let us understand it when we have the power 1 by 2 we can easily write it 1 by 2 as a whole power so if we take this 1 by 2 out of the bracket what we can write here is it is the hi square to the square multiplied by 1 by 2 power same way h2 to the power 1 by 2 and i2 to the power 1 by 2 but this is what it is the value for our original kc so for uh, concentration of hi square divided by h uh, concentration of h2 multiplied by concentration of i2 we can write kc so your new kc double dash is equal to kc to the power 1 by 2 so if we multiply the uh, original reaction with uh, 2 we get kc dash is equal to kc to the power 2 if we multiply it with 1 by 2 the original kc has to be taken power as 1 by 2 so now equilibrium constant obtained by multiplying equation with 1 by 2 that is the new kc dash double dash is equal to the equilibrium constant of the original uh, original reaction to the power 1 by 2 so if the original equation is multiplied with 2 we get the new expression kc dash is equal to kc to the power 2 if the original equation is multiplied by 1 by 2 then kc double dash is equal to kc to the power 1 by 2 so now we can easily conclude that equilibrium constant for original chemical equation kc for h2 plus i2 that gives 2 hi an equilibrium constant obtained by multiplying the original equation with n kc new suppose suppose we multiply this equation with n so we will get n h2 plus n i2 that gives 2 n h i we can easily write that kc new is equal to kc to the power n so if we multiply the equation with any number then the new formed kc will have the original kc to the power that number with which we multiply the original equations so i hope my dear students this is what it is understood to you if there is something which you could not understand you can ask me बच्चों अगर ये डिस्कशन में आपको कुछ समझ में नहीं आया है तो आप लोग मुझसे पूछ सकते हैं बच्चों प्लीज बता दीजिए क्या आप मुझे सुन पा रहे हैं हेलो ओके चलिए चलिए देन लेट्स मूव टू दी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन राइट द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द इक्विलिब्रियम कांस्टेंट केसी for the following reactions now we need to learn how to write the uh, equilibrium constant for any reactions you can easily know that when we write kc for any reactions first we take the uh, products then we write the square bracket around them we put this uh, stoichiometric coefficient as a power so for this we will write uh, kc is equal to the concentration of no to the power 2 the concentration of cl2 divided by the concentration of NOCl to the power 2 because this stoichiometric coefficient is 2 let us look into the next reactions if we have the equation 2 CuNO3 twice solid that gives 2 CuO solid plus 4 NO2 gas plus O2 gas we can write that Kc is equal to concentration of concentration of O2 concentration of O2 to the power uh, sorry concentration of NO2 this is NO2 concentration of no2 to the power 4 concentration of o2 to the power 1 concentration of cuo solid to the power 2 and concentration of cuno3 twice solid to the power 2 for solids and liquids the molar concentration is considered unity please remember that if in a chemical reactions if we have some solids or if we have some uh, liquids then their concentration is considered to be unity that means is equal to 1 so the concentration of cuo solid is equal to 1 so the power 2 is also equal to 1 
concentration of cu no3 twice to the power 2 is also equal to 1 so we can remove this or we can write one for this expression and thus finally we can write kc for uh, this particular reaction as and therefore kc is equal to no2 to the power 4 multiplied by o2 to the power 1 so my dear students please remember please remember that the concentration for solids and liquids are considered unity while writing the equilibrium constants so let's understand the same with one more example we have fe plus 3 aqueous plus 3 oh minus aqueous that gives fe oh thrice aqueous so for kc we can write fe oh thrice solid divided by the fe plus 3 aqueous into the concentration of oh minus to the power 3 but we have already seen that for solid substances the concentration is considered to be unity so concentration of fe oh thrice solid is equal to 1 and therefore kc we can write kc is equal to 1 divided by the concentration of fe plus 3 multiplied by the concentration of OH minus to the power 3. My dear students, these are the exercise questions that we have been solving. We will solve one more problem and then we, we, we may stop the class. Let us move forward and understand one more problem. The following concentration were obtained for the formation of ammonia from N2 and H2 at equilibrium at 500 Kelvin. You can see the values Concentration of N2 is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 mole per liter. Concentration of H2 is equal to 3.0 into 10 to the power minus 2 mole per liter. And concentration of ammonia is equal to 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 2 mole per liter. Calculate the equilibrium constant. So my dear students, for, for the reaction, the equilibrium constant for the reaction N2 plus 3H2, that gives uh, twice NS3. We can easily write, my dear students, that the concentration of product that is your NS3 to the power 2 divided by concentration of N2. There is no stoichiometric coefficient, so we will not write any power. And here the uh, stoichiometric coefficient is uh, 3, so concentration of H2 to the power 3. This is how we represent Kc. I might have represented Kc this way. So you can see that Kc is equal to concentration of NS3 to the power 2 divided by the concentration of N N2 gas to the concentration of H2 gas. Now we can put those values. Now please remember or don't forget to write their units. So 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 2 square molar square divided by 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 molar and, and 3.1 into 10 to the power minus 3 to the power 3. So here you will put power 3 total. So it is molar into molar to the power 3 my dear students. Overall, you can write 4 for this. So this is the power 4 I have written for both of them. So you can write 1.2 into 1.2 uh, into 1.2 and minus 2 into minus 2, that is minus 4. 1.5 into 3.0, it is power 3, so we'll write it 3 times. 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0 and minus 2 to the power 3, that is minus 6. So now we have upper side minus 4. Here it is a minus 3. Uh, to the power 3 so it is a uh, 6 and this upper uh, the upper side we have molar mole to the power 2 here total 3 plus 1 that gives us the power 4 and that is why by multiplying we uh, or see mole to the power 2 divided by mole to the power 4 will give us 1 upon mole to the power 4 minus 2 that is 1 upon mole to the power 2 so that is what I have written here now, by doing all this uh, multiplication, you know, or you are very well that 3 when it is multiplied by 4, it gives us uh, 3 when it is multiplied by 0 0.4, it gives us 1.2. Uh, suppose if we multiply 3 with 0 0.5, we'll get 1.5. And this 3 and 3 gives us 9. By doing this all simplification, we get 0 0.0355 into 10 to the power 4, which ultimately can be written as 3.55 into 10 to the power minus 2 mole to the power minus two. please don't forget to write these units because in your textbook they have not written units but in exam it is necessary to write unit for such calculations so this is how we can end up the class today now if you have any doubts you can ask me but so if you have any doubts you can ask me no, no, sir, for that. no sir.